Welcome back, everybody, to Social Media Show. I'm your host, Sam Dever, and we are here again for our last segment with Shecky Green, Jonathan Schechter. For this uh, segment, Shecky, I'd like to talk a little bit about your career as an entrepreneur in media. Just reading a little bit about you and when you were at Harvard and you started up this magazine called The Source, a.k.a. The Bible of Hip Hop. And I love that story because when I was reading it, it kind of reminded me of Bill Gates and those guys when they were in the garage starting Microsoft, kind of what you guys were doing with this magazine when hip hop was coming. So you, in a nutshell, tell us how that happened. Okay, well, you know, the year, let's go back to 1988, which um, was, I believe, the most important year for hip hop, not because we started The Source, but musically, you know, that was when it was really in the prime of its creativity. And... You know, there was <clears throat> a need for something that treated the music seriously. And when I say serious, I don't mean like you can't have a good time. What I mean is a, a you know, a journal that actually addressed hip hop music as a real art form and all the things that went along with it. So we were doing a rap radio show on Harvard's college radio station around that time. And we started collecting um, people's addresses you know this is of course the 80s so it was there was pre-internet yeah so no we were, twitter handles no twitter then. none of yeah. that we, we were basically on the phone collecting people's home addresses which became the core of a mailing list which became the the first people to receive a newsletter that was designed initially to just promote our radio show so our initial goal was just to get people to be aware of our radio show and then to get the industry to be aware so we could get records before anyone else and then as time went on we started realizing that you know there really isn't a magazine in general that's serving this niche um there had been some some really crappy hip-hop magazines prior to that really excuse me teeny bopper type mags with like full of pictures and not even good pictures right. cheesy stuff and then there was um you know rolling stone spin and the village voice all of which would cover hip hop occasionally, but really just you know one article, an issue, or something. So it was clear that there was a need for somebody to do a real magazine about hip hop. But we were students, so we kind of went about it very gradually, one month at a time. So one month we would have, you know, uh, four pages, and we had six pages, and we had eight pages, and we had sixteen pages. Then we added color on the cover. Then we added color on the inside. Then we started taking better pictures. Then we started designing it better. And then we got a better articles. And it kind of went really like it's something that you couldn't do nowadays because, first of all, we all know print media ain't what it used to be. But, you know, it was just kind of a, the time and place and the setting that allowed us to slowly evolve this idea where to the point where we graduated in, um, in 1990, we moved the business to New York. And that was when we became a real business. So... 1990 was when we actually got on newsstands and became a real magazine. Um, and, you know, that was put us dead center in in the middle of the hip hop the culture, heart, yeah. the heart of hip hop, New York City, downtown lower Manhattan, um, or surrounded by the greatest record labels like Def Jam and, and Tommy Boy and, and Jive at that time. And then put us really in the middle of a very exciting art form and all the things that went along with it, hip hop is a very heavy political content. So we covered that. Hip hop has fashion associated with it. So we were the first to cover that. Um, the early TV shows and movies that had to do with hip hop, we were the first to cover that. So there was a real need to kind of, you know, be someone had to really take the ball and run with it. And we were just in the right time and the right place and with the right point of view to to do that. So you know, for those years, you know, basically my tenure there was up until about 96. So from 88 to 96, for those eight years or so, I was the editor in chief. And, you know, basically, in some ways, in the driver's seat of, of hip hop overall, because, absolutely, you know, we would review records and the records, would, people would actually read the reviews and care about them. And, you know, 
it was really just the first people to kind of be a critical voice. And so not it was sometimes we put sometimes we didn't like things. I mean, sometimes we didn't like a record, and that was had never been done before in hip hop. So you know, it was it was a great time, and it's always going to be part of my uh, of my DNA. I mean, hip hop, especially what I call golden era hip hop, which um, you know is like literally burned into my DNA. I mean, I sometimes wake up in the middle of the night, find myself like thinking about a song that came out in like 1983, and like this, I remember like not only every lyric but every sound on some of these records. I listen to them so much that literally it's like burned into my mind. Like I know every clap, every like hi-hat, every like <laughs> drum roll, like everything about these songs. So that makes me, you know, one of those guys that like, when you talk about that era of hip hop, you know, I'm an expert in that, you know, especially that era. I kind of fell out. Once you get past 2000, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not as up on it as- Kind as of capped it off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm more of an, I'm, a, I'm an 80s and like 90s guy, but like 2000s, that's like the younger kids, and I started losing. Can, I, I just didn't feel like I was relating to the music as much anymore because the the style of it changed a lot. You know, it became less about having really clever lyrics and more, and just dumbing down everything, and you know, it just kind of changed. But nowadays, actually, I see some signs of um of life in it, and I'm kind of getting excited about it again. There are some really good artists out there, really good up and coming, and and my hope is is that. And they are becoming bigger and getting bigger followings. And social media, I think, has played a huge, like a Kendrick Lamar or someone like that, you know, yeah. someone of great substance coming through. There is hope. Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah. He's a great artist. And yeah. there's a few others that I think are actually like bringing it back to what I consider what, what hip hop is supposed to be, which is really innovative, tight rhymes and like a certain sound that, you know, I mean, I'm all for evolution. I'm not a guy that's going to be like, that sucks just because it's not KRS One or Rakim. Right, right, right. But, you got to always keep in mind, you know, just like with any genre, if you listen to rock, you got to remember like, you know, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, The Doors, you know, Jimi Hendrix. Of I mean, you know, if you, so, you know, it's just the same with hip hop. You got to remember the architects and, and always kind of hold those up as like, this is how it's supposed to be. Do you have, and kind of relating back to the source, do you have a favorite issue you guys did or do you have a favorite I know you you know so much about music and I've met so many people, but is there one that just artist or issue you guys did that sticks out in your mind? Is man, that was really cool. There's probably two, and they're both kind of similar. The first was when it, way back, and this is a rare collector's item. Right at night, right in January of 1990, we put out what I call the decade of rap, 1980 to 1990, and oh, that, that was sounds awesome. that was my one man. That was really like my senior thesis you know when people yeah have a thesis i didn't write a thesis because i was so busy being the editor of the source but this was essentially my senior thesis it was a huge amount of content crammed into one issue and then we did it again many years later for the 50th issue of the source where we did a similar thing where it was kind of a, a retrospective looking at the entire history of the art form and on the cover of that one is Cool Herc, Africa Bambada, and Grandmaster Flash, three of the first DJs of hip hop, three of the most important DJs. And that was, um, you know, that was another type of issue where it's like a huge amount of historical information covering many, many different artists is kind of crammed in there. So those are the two I probably I'm the most proud of. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And we, I could talk hip hop all day. That, oh, that's nice. so cool. So cool. Besides the source, you also do a variety of other things. Uh, one in particular I really like, uh, Screenworks. Uh, shout out to Jordan Laws. I really am a fan of the work he does. Could you tell our audience a little bit about what Screenworks is? Yeah, sure. Screenworks is a collective of video DJs and video artists um, where these guys are experts at basically manipulating video content to create something new. So in some cases we take existing content from a media source such as we did some stuff with playboy for example or um just a, a tv network that wants to repurpose their content or remix it in other cases we just do it on our own some of jordan's most popular stuff jordan laws has to do with uh, he's one of the screenworks guys um is you know we we he loves like for example uh he did a really popular one based on inside the actor's studio where um, he found, like, he took, like, he watched hundreds of them 
and then chopped up the answers and found similar answers where like, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. ever see that one? Yeah, and I then, saw it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's yeah. just an example. And, but, you know, what's happened is, to be honest with you, the art form that these guys were really early on, some of these guys like Jordan and, and uh, Second Nature have been doing this for like over 10 years, but it's now become quite commonplace. You know, if, if you go to YouTube, you know, everyone's a video editor now. Everyone is chopping things up, remixing things. It's become really commonplace, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, it's become an accepted medium of art and expression, which is this idea of repurposing existing content in a new way. And, you know, I'm actually, I love it. I love that that's become the norm because, you know, it's always been, um, you know, a fan, I'm always, I've always been a fan of when it's done well. And there's a few people that aren't Screenworks, I think, do it really well. There's a guy named Melody Sheep who did this like Mr. Rogers stuff. I don't know if you ever saw that. But I haven't seen that, but I want to did, YouTube that immediately. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> so, you know, that's just an example of there are people out there that that take existing content and remix it and re-edit it and make something new out of it. And that's what Screenworks is all about. It's kind of like recycled media almost. It is. Being able to turn something that's already been created into something I think that's the beauty of it. Well, that's kind of like hip, hip hop too. If you think about like uh, you know for a, a lot of hip hop is sampling and like true. it's Very the true. same idea. Same thing. The yeah. same idea of taking, you know, a, a riff that some guy played in like 1965 and then like cutting in a certain way so it's funky in the modern era and then rapping on top of it. So, you know, that's that's not that's become less common nowadays. I think more there's more actual original production in in all of music now sampling is less popular than it used to be but um it's still part of you know part of music not just hip-hop it's it's used in dance music too and i know whenever i'm listening to uh even like tupac or any of those and then i'll hear go back to an oldie station and i go wait a minute that's all about me or that that's how do you want it i'm like what it's it's crazy how you know the music keeps going you know i think i think that's the beauty of it i think it's cool for new generations okay they that's awesome what they did now here's what i can do with it and sometimes you hear the same song being like repurposed multiple times for different generations for example uh you know uh grandmaster flash uh you know it's like a jungle sometimes it makes me wonder and then puffy sampled it and then i heard a song recently where some young guy did sampled it again so it's like the same records get used like over and over again, which is fine. Like you said, that's part of the art form. Yeah, you know? keep, keep, keeps it going, I yeah. guess. So, what's the future of media to you? I know, I know you do lots of other things too with videos. Just content creator, you know, is pretty much the best way to sum it up. Is there anything else um, that you're working on right now besides things we've talked about? Uh, yeah. Well, as you mentioned, you know, I do with in my capacity for director of programming for the Win, I do a lot of content creating, you know, a lot of videos. We we do stuff with Sirius Radio mm. where we do live broadcasts. We're getting more into live broadcasts for video as well. We got some stuff coming up this in the next couple of months where we're going to be doing more live streaming, which is one area I'm very excited about. Very I think cool. there's I think there's a big growth area in live. Basically, uh, let me put it this way. I think one of the biggest growth areas for nightclubs is people sitting in their underwear at home watching other people party because I think that's actually an untapped market and we saw with the ultra music festival in miami oh man and coachella yeah. how pop how exciting it is just to sit in your house and watch other people have fun it, because the music was great the artists were great and then all those people create all that energy so that i feel like is underutilized in the nightclub scene today i think there's a lot of untapped potential so that's one area that i'm focusing on this year is doing more live streaming that's really inter- no. That's really interesting. I think yeah, the, the ultra like the amount of coverage on social media. Like I was on Facebook and it was like, I, so, someone's posting a new video like every ten minutes, and I'm yeah. just like, wow. It's like I didn't even have to go there. Exactly. <laughs> I could watch I mean. the whole thing. Yes. So I think that's the. I think there's a big future in in that. And, uh, um, but yeah, generally it's like as we said in the first in the first segment. You know, I feel lucky to be at the win, um, being that we are at the center of dance music culture in America and because we have so many venues and we have 40 plus resident DJs that puts that means that it's a constant stream of talent of the of the highest caliber so I get to meet and interact with David Guetta Avicii you know you name it um a few small names yeah I mean like every uh, everyone under the sun and it's been really really cool 
like Diplo is a really great guy. Oh, um, very nice. There's, there's just a, it's just been really, really interesting, and I'm grateful to be to be still at the epicenter of, of an exciting art form. Yeah, and one thing I'll say, uh, I didn't mention the other segment. Uh, you guys have the great talent that comes, but with the win, I think legacy and what makes you guys so strong is the people. It's good. All the people I've met there, just really shout out to David Schnitzer, of course. Um, yes. Just really good people running the program, and I think that's what's going to make the win just stand and continue here for years on. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a great education for me in in the nightclub business and and the win as you say is a, a very high-end operation so it's been it's been perfect all right well Shecky, thank you so much for taking the time it's been an absolute pleasure learned a lot and i uh, look forward to see you and your projects and definitely what's going on in the win in the future here thank you sam i really appreciate it it's been a pleasure all right thank you sir thank you appreciate it.